Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. If you haven't noticed, our planet is rapidly changing. We're getting a great acceleration of the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events like droughts or torrential rains leading to floods around the planet. The keystone of the system or the breaking point is the Arctic. The Arctic is getting a lot darker with the loss of sea ice and snow cover. And as a result, it's a lot warmer. We have a huge temperature amplification and it's disrupting the jet streams and it's causing disruption around the planet. So in this particular video, I'm going to focus on what's going on in the Arctic. So if you Google Arctic sea ice graphs, you'll get, up, you'll get this uh, site here which uh, is basically near real-time um, maps and graphs, etc., on what's going on in the Arctic. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at some of the uh, data um, as of today. So, so this is uh, 2017. This is the curve for 2017. What it is is the temperature uh, north of the 80, 80th um, degree latitude parallel. Okay, the, the green area is the mean from 1958 to 2002. The red in this case is for 2017, okay, up to today's date, Friday, August 4th. So what you can see is it's a much, there's fluctuation here at the beginning of the year. This is uh, January 1st. This is the end of the year. So here we are uh, about the, just over the 200th day. Um, August 4th, and you can see that we're above the normal temperature, the normal mean for 2017. What happened last year? Last year we had a powerful El Nino. We have this fluctuation here, but what happened is the temperature refused to drop. Okay, there were large spikes here. It was uh, 20 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Okay, these are five degree increments here. This is Kelvin, zero degrees Celsius is um, 273, um, roughly degrees Kelvin is zero degrees Celsius, which is the blue line. Okay, so you can see the uh, temperatures here were much, much larger than normal. Up to, this is, this is a 20 degree range. My fingers, okay, 20 degrees warmer than normal Celsius. Multiply 1.8, that's 36, almost 40 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than normal, okay, um, in the latter part of last year. So the ice did not form as, as properly. Um, if we go back to some previous years, okay, there's some fluctuation here in 2015, 2014, 2013. Okay, 2012 was, a, was a, a year with very low sea ice volume, record low, and you can see that uh, there, there is, uh, there, it didn't drop as quickly here, but if we go back to 2016, you can see um, this was a very unusually warm year in the fall. Okay, going into the winter last year, it was extremely warm in the Arctic, the ice didn't freeze properly. Okay, let's go on. Um, so this is a, a great site here. This is looking at sea surface temperatures uh, globally and the anomaly. So this is the anomaly for October, for sorry, for August 4th, 2017. And you can see that the temperature anomaly relative to the long-term mean is enormous in the Arctic region. It's just incredibly, in fact, there's lots of areas of the ocean. It's extremely warm off of the east coast of the U.S. As we had some uh, jet streams sort of looping around, causing a gearing sort of pattern, which brought all this moist air. When you've got very warm water, you've got very high evaporation rates, lots of water vapor in the atmosphere. There was like a gearing here, which was bringing the water vapor over land. And we had areas... Um, in the eastern U.S. where we had rain rates of four inches per, you know, per hour or in a 45 minute period even. So torrential rains, you know, one inch an hour is, is heavy rainfall, four inches. I mean, 
basically the, the patterns are, you know, what we're seeing at much higher latitudes now is we're seeing what we had in the tropics, just, just had in the tropics before. Torrential rains were associated with the tropics, but because of the shifting heat patterns and the jet streams, all due to the extreme Arctic warming um, from, from abrupt climate change, we're getting a spreading of tropical events to much, much higher latitudes, and that's what we're seeing. The concern is, is that the jet streams get so fractured and broken and destabilized and have no pattern to guide them when we have a complete loss of sea ice in a much warmer Arctic. So these torrential rain events will ramp up, I think, in, or at least an order of magnitude, a factor of 10. Um, and it's going to just hammer cities and hammer countries and hammer infrastructure and, and really hamper our ability to grow food in lots of places. And it's going to spike food prices. And that will wake people up to how serious climate change is. Um, if you just click on the Arctic region here, then it brings up, so this is a polar view looking down on the Arctic. This is Greenland, Northern Canada, <coughs> Asia over here, Russia. Okay, so this is the, you, what you can see is these brown areas are eight degrees Celsius warmer than normal. This is again the, um, this is again the sea surface temperature anomaly. So the water, uh, okay, so here's where the ice is basically. It's keeping the temperature about zero degrees. Um, there's some water on top of the ice here, so it's measuring here. Otherwise, we're in this region, very close to zero, which is where the temperature remains until the ice all melts. When the ice is gone, as it is in these surrounding regions, the solar energy is absorbed and the water is heating up tremendously heating up. So the ice is being attacked from warm air temperatures above, rainfall events that are occurring in the Arctic, uh, melting the ice. It's also being attacked from below by the uh, very warm ocean waters that's coming in from the Pacific and the Atlantic side. It's also, there's export of ice through the Fram Strait. There's also a lot of the ice, which was the thicker ridged ice. There's almost no multi-year ice. The ice is only what has formed the previous winter. Basically the multi-year ice is gone. And the ridged ice that is thicker here has, no longer has the structure to, to, to block and keep, uh, you know, keep stuck in this area. It's fractured and broken and it's going through, it's slipping through the Canadian archipelago being exported that way to its uh, destruction. So the Arctic sea ice is, is being attacked from all different directions, and it's only a matter of time, not much time before it's completely gone. Um, certainly, I would say before 2020, completely gone in the, in the summer melt, the way we're heading. Okay, so let's have a look at the global sea ice area. So this curve here is for 2016. And you can see, you know, this is the envelope of all previous years from 78 to now. And what we're seeing in 2016, we had a record drop. It just fell off a cliff. And here's where we're tracking now. We were tracking below 20, this is 2017. Sorry, this is 2016, this curve, the darker red and the lighter red here is, is this year, 2017. So we're below what it was even last year. Um, and here it's sort of intermingling. Okay, this is the global sea ice area. This is where the, there's 100% of concentration of ice. If we look at the extent now, which is just 15% of the area is ice and is defined in the extent, you can see a similar pattern. This is 2016, dropping off a cliff and we're actually lower in 2017. Okay, this is if you add the ice in the in Antarctica and the Arctic. This is the global ice volume from both hemispheres. This is for 2016 here and you can see that it uh, because most of this I believe is because of the Arctic um, there's also contribution from Antarctica, but it's dropped off tremendously here in 2016. 
compared to any other year. Folks, we're in completely new territory here, which is very exciting on the one hand, but it's also very alarming and frightening on the other hand. This is the global sea ice volume anomaly, and you can see here's where we are here. This is updated to December 2016. Okay, so very, very low uh, position here as of the end of last year. This is the Arctic case. The other graph, the previous graph was the Arctic plus Antarctic. This is the Arctic sea ice volume. The trend line here, the blue line, the anomaly. Um, okay, so you can see the data, the wiggly curve here. And then you can see these bands of one sigma and two sigma variation, standard deviation. So this is sort of the error, the band. And you can see how quickly it's dropping off here. Okay, you can see the anomaly. So we're again, this is just, uh, you know, we know clearly where this is going. It's going to zero rapidly. Okay, this is the ice thickness. This is the sea ice thickness. Again, 2017. You know, we're just bumping along the bottom of all of the other years. So this is the ice thickness, the daily average ice uh, Arctic sea ice thickness. And we're just over a meter here, about 1.2 meters or so. Okay, um, and this was sort of in, in, in mid-July. Okay, this is uh, what we're gonna, what I'm showing now is I'm showing the Arctic, uh, the ice thickness. Okay, so this is the thick ice here. This is the only thick ice here. And then uh, this is uh, three and a half meter ice here down to three meter and so on. This is two meter or so, and then we go into the dark blues, which are about a meter or so. So look at the outlay here. This is, a, this is for around the beginning of August in 2012. This is in 2013. This is in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, okay? So notice in 2017, Okay, there's almost no green or red. So there's almost, almost no ice of any thickness there. And what you can see is fingers of it are breaking down through the Canadian archipelago. So again, if I go back, there's not much export here because of the way that the uh, jet streams are positioned and the, and the uh, ice is being transported, being pushed by the surface wind. So if we come back here, look at the difference. There's all that green and uh, there's only this uh, light blue. There's only stuff that's two meters or, 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 or below uh, here. Here. So what, what, if we go back here, yeah, there's almost nothing. This is uh, two meter or so ice up to two and a half meter. And that's, that, that's ice in this region. There's really no thick stuff left, okay? And this stuff can just slip through the Canadian archipelago and be gone. So again, 2016. 2015, 2014, 2013, and 2012, okay? This was the previous uh, sea ice minimum 2012 um, in a, a, about a month and a, about six weeks later than this. We've still got at least six weeks left in the melt season, six or seven weeks left. So the question is, you know, from here, how much is going to be left? Like, it's conceivable that most of this stuff, this stuff, I mean, it depends on the weather patterns. It depends, you know, a lot can happen in six or seven weeks. Okay, this is the transport of the ice. This is the motion of the ice here. So normally, you would expect it to be coming sort of like, like this pattern here. Okay, this is a low here. Uh, high pressure comes in. The wind pattern comes in here. We've got a cyclone here and uh, we've got a transport of sea ice out this way, but this is not conducive to this ice here going out through the Fram Strait. There's not much export through the Fram Strait now. Okay, now this is a, this is a sea ice sickness played over a year. So it looks like, uh, you know, we're in winter here. Okay, um, it's starting to go here. So we're going into uh, melting. There's still lots of export out here through the Fram Strait. I'll continue this video. Thanks.